And one when we are speaking about IMD, the rain gauge. Uh, this is a standard rain gauge that we IMD itself is constructing. And uh, this one is having two standard diameters. We have uh, two such areas. This is a 100 square meter area. There is 200 square meter area. Square centimeter, sorry. So this is 200 square centimeter. We have a small one which is a 100 square centimeter. Now the water collected by this uh, collector will be falling onto this channel, plastic jar. That every day we take out and we pour into this machine jar. It's already calibrated for this area. Area changes, the calibration changes. So accordingly, we measure the rainfall and uh, temperatures. Of course, are for in thermometers are for temperature. What's and the highest rainfall in a day in Goa? Uh, that's actually a difficult question to answer. There have been incidents when there was 41 centimeters of rainfall. Which year? You are asking this? Yeah, roughly, roughly? Roughly around uh, 1960s or so. 60s, 41 centimeters. One point, at least one point. But if you are asking for Panji, uh, if I am not wrong, it's around 35 centimeters. 35. Wow. So 17, 18 is, is, happens almost every year, no? once or twice. At least 120 centimeter rainfall over a region in one season is shown. Like in Satari and uh, Sankyam last year when those floods took place, yeah. we had 27 and 21 per day, per day, in a day. Uh, otherwise, uh, we call heavy rainfall when it is beyond 7 centimeters in a day. So that's a normal uh, normal feature for Goa when one oh, yeah. station is At least two or three stations will get heavy rainfall. And the problem is that once a single heavy rainfall event takes place, it's not a serious, serious matter. Once even an extremely heavy rainfall which is beyond 20 centimeters takes place, that's that's also, I mean, this climatology, this topography can afford that. But if it continues for three days, four days, then the scenario totally changes. So that's why we have slowly shifted from weather forecasting to impact-based forecasting. I mean, again, I again have to keep on asking this question. I'm not sure whether any of you are following our forecasts or social media uh, information. What we do, we don't just give the forecast. We give what the impacts of that weather will be. Like, uh, it, it's like we, we find that the heavy rainfall is going to continue for uh, continue for two or three days. Then accordingly, give, we give the forecast. Like, there could be possibilities of water level rising. People near the uh, uh, rivers should be taking precautions and dams should be maintained. And all such kind of information, which is vital for uh, life and livelihood, we try to give such information. So that is actually the motto of this WMOD, early, early warning and early action. So, uh, weather departments, disaster management agencies, all of them have to be proactive. They have to really come out of their shell and, and like give more information that is on ground useful. So that's our whole target is. So uh, these instruments. So this gives you what happened. Exactly. Not to focus. But again, like I told, these are being fed to numerical weather prediction models. Oh, so ultimately, they all help us to project the future. future. Now uh, we have these instruments called panemometer, which is to measure wind speed. It has a uh, recording uh, uh, scale here, so a uh, human observer has to come at regular intervals and he has to note down this from this, he can estimate what is the wind speed. Now all these are um, instruments which involve human intervention. Now it's, uh, I mean, we don't need to explain how difficult it is to establish new manual observatory survey now. It requires a lot of investment. Human resources are required, offices are required. So, like in any other field, we are looking for alternatives for that. Something that can do all this stuff of the automated way. So, that's the answer for that automatic weather station. Such an automatic weather station will have all these sensors replaced, I mean, all these uh, mechanical instruments replaced with electronic sensors. Now, for temperature sensor, we have a ATRS sensor, platinum based sensor. Then uh, we have pressure sensor which is based on uh, uh, this principle, scientific principle. When we apply pressure, there is change in resistivity capacity. So based on that, we have a pressure sensor. Then there is a tipping bucket rain gauge which will measure the rainfall automatically. We have wind sensor based on Doppler effect on ultrasonic waves. So that gives us all this information uh, like wind speed and velocity. We have one at our campus. We will show you one automatic Just to add to that. This is an automatic rain gauge. Now it's called a tipping bucket rain gauge. Uh, it's very uh, basic uh, and very simple principle. I'll tell you how it works. 
when uh, rain fall is taking place, the collector will collect the quantum of rain. What it will fall onto uh, this point here, this collector point here, and from there to these buckets. These are called dipping buckets. Now these are so calibrated that almost 15.4 milliliters of water when falls onto this, it will tilt to one side. The moment it tilts to this side, the other one starts receiving water. So whenever rainfall is in a continuous activity, these buckets will keep on filling. Yeah, and when one tilt comes or 15.4 milliliters of rain falls, it is equivalent to one centimeters of rain. I'm not going to the mathematics yeah, of yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, I'll yeah, yeah. can explain you. Uh, but in simple terms, one tilt means half a centimeter of rainfall. Okay. So our uh, for every tilt, there is one magnet attached here. Oh. And there is uh, one yeah, circuit okay. here which will be completed when this magnet passes near that. Okay. So we have a pulse. Okay. So this pulse will be continuous. Every pulse means half a centimeter of uh, yeah, half a pulse. millimeter, sorry, half a millimeter of rainfall. Yeah. And this data loggers they are attached on their system can sense that, count that, and accordingly we can get even going even from the remotest of stations yeah. we can. But get you get it by. Uh, yeah. Now we get every fifteen thing. minutes. Ah, you get it by a telecom. Nobody has to go there and download Nobody has to go. It is through GSM. Ah. We have a SIM inside. Yeah, this. telecom. Yeah, that will continuously transmit the data ah. every 15 minutes. Okay. So all these are actually available yeah, yeah. in public domain as well. Okay. Uh, we can, you can, anybody can monitor. Indigenous technology or what? It has some of them are indigenous. Okay. Like most of them recently we have installed are indigenous. But the one I am going to show you here, that was initially when it was installed in 2012 or so, that was an American technology. Now it also has been replaced by an Indian company, Indian manufacturer. And uh, uh, actually we are so proud to say these systems are functioning extremely well, much better than some of the older devices which were foreign made. So that's a good thing, these things are actually, uh, our requirements are getting fulfilled within our countries. Yeah, yeah. So that's a great And boost. more economically I'm sure. Exactly. Now these radars, radars are all getting manufactured in India itself. So these radars? Exactly. And oh, that too with the latest of technologies, like okay. there are no fly stunts inside, now all these are solid system devices. So, okay. so, so they are compact, they yeah. are much more reliable. Sure. Yeah. So such developments are taking place. Can we see the radar? Sure, sure, I can take you inside. Yeah. So we will go there. We'll go. Okay. At what uh, level, it's absolutely still, let's say, planes or things, but they always try to get above the weather. So what is that above the weather? Actually, aircraft fly at approximately 33 30, yeah, 35, yeah. yeah. That's the limit of propopause for our land. Okay. It's the troposphere, the lowest level of atmosphere where all the weather phenomena takes place. Yeah. We go beyond 15 or 16 kilometers for yeah. our region. Yeah, Again, yeah. the propopause, no, uh, there, are, there are a lot of complexities like when we are near the latitude uh, equator, oh, yeah, yeah. and we are near the equator, uh, this propopause is the highest. Oh, yes, yeah. As we go towards the polar oh, side, it comes down. Yeah. So now in our region, it would be approximately 13 to 15 kilometers okay, in so the summer season also. Okay. So, so now, that means the planes first try to get above that? Yeah, trains usually fly at 11 to 12 kilometers. That is 33,000, roughly. Their cruise speed oh, is... Oh, uh, kilometers, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So that's their cruise speed. 35,000 is 10. Yeah. 10. Uh, roughly we say 10, every 3,000 feet is 1 kilometer. Yeah, 35 would be 12. Yeah, so around 11 to 12 kilometers. Kilometer. Right? Again, this uh, radar information are all vital for them also. Yes, of course. Uh, sometimes if there is any significant system that may climb like we saw there, it can be up to 16, 17 kilometers high on a severe. So that can badly affect the air traffic. So they will have to divert, uh, they will have to avoid these systems and take the maneuvers accordingly. So that is all. So we will go to the radar side. 